Hi, how's it going? Great, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing great. What are you up to? I'm planning my next vacation. What, vacation? You can't travel right now. We're in the middle of a pandemic. What do you mean? I just read the newspaper that the Pfizer vaccine is 95% effective. Yeah, so? Well, 95% is basically 100%. So now we can do whatever we want. I don't think that's quite true. I mean, 95% is not 100%. And I think you're confusing effectiveness with efficacy. Yeah, but it says effectiveness in the newspaper. And what is efficacy? I've never heard of that term before. Well, come with me. I'll explain it to you. So the Pfizer vaccine was reported to have 95% efficacy. Later, I'll get into what the actual difference between efficacy and effectiveness is. But first, let's talk about how this actual figure 95% was reached. So Pfizer recruited 43,660 participants into a clinical trial. Half of them, that's 21,830, were given a placebo, while the other half, another 21,830, were given the actual vaccine. So do you know what a placebo is? So in a clinical trial, a placebo is a fake treatment given to participants. In this case, it would be an injection that looked and felt exactly like a vaccine. This way, participants won't actually know whether they got the real treatment or the placebo. In vaccine trials, this is really important because patients who know they've been given a vaccine might actually begin to act less cautiously than they otherwise would. They might start going out more, maybe social distancing less and seeing people more than they otherwise would. Then they might actually end up exposing themselves to the coronavirus more than the rest of the population is, making it more difficult to tell how accurate the vaccine actually is. So after 28 days, there were 170 confirmed cases of coronavirus across both of the groups of participants. Of these, 162 were in the placebo group, while only eight were in the vaccine group. So 162 out of 21,830 gives us an infection rate of 0.74%. So for the placebo group, 0.74% of participants became infected. For the vaccine group, 8 out of 21,000 830 gives us an infection rate of 0.04%. So of the participants who received the vaccine, 0.04% became infected. Both of these numbers might seem pretty low, so is there a way to compare them to see if there is a significant difference in the infection risks for the vaccine as compared to the placebo groups? Well, that's where efficacy comes in. The first thing we're going to do is subtract the infection risk for the vaccine from the infection risk for the placebo. 0.74 minus 0.04 gives us 0.7, which shows that the vaccine was able to reduce the infection risk by 0.7%. That might seem like a small number, but when we divide 0.7 by the infection risk for the uh, placebo group, 0.74, this gives us our efficacy rate of 95% telling us that the vaccine was able to successfully reduce the number of infections by 95% as compared to the placebo group. So we've seen here that very small differences between our placebo and our vaccine can lead to very large consequences. And really, there's no better way of illustrating this than by scaling up the example to the size of the entire United States of America. There's approximately 328 million people living in the USA. So assuming these risk percentages, that means that in an unvaccinated country, we could expect around 2,500,000 infections. However, using the vaccine, we would expect to see a reduction of 95% all the way down to around 131,000 
infections. So that's a pretty significant difference. Over 2 million people have been saved from infection. So be sure to get vaccinated and don't plan your vacations just yet. I've shown you how we calculated our 95% efficacy results. So now I'm going to go into what the difference between efficacy and effectiveness actually is. So we found our 95% efficacy figure from the results of a clinical trial conducted by Pfizer. So efficacy is the success of our treatment specifically under the conditions of a clinical trial. In a clinical trial, we're able to have control over the conditions under which we conduct our study. So for example, in this case, we were able to guarantee 100% vaccination for a group of people, and every participant was followed up with after a period of 28 days. It was randomly decided whether participants would receive the vaccine or the placebo, and participants didn't actually know which of these treatments they were receiving. However, in the real world, we're rarely able to guarantee these ideal conditions, and that's where effectiveness comes in. So effectiveness is specifically the success of our treatment under real world conditions. So rarely in practice, we'll actually be able to guarantee 100% vaccination. People might choose not to get the vaccine for personal reasons, or they might not have access to it. For ethical reasons, we often exclude vulnerable groups of people, such as pregnant women, Elder, uh, elderly people and children from clinical trials. Another important factor on vaccine effectiveness is storage conditions. So the Pfizer vaccine needs to be stored at negative 70 degrees Celsius or else it begins to lose its effectiveness. However, many medical facilities, for example, hospitals in smaller rural regions might not have the capacity to store vaccines at this low of a temperature, which would affect the access that these communities have to the vaccine. Another important factor is demographics. We can't say with certainty yet whether the vaccine is equally effective for people across different ages, genders, and races. So Pfizer says in their report that the vaccine is equally effective across all different groups of the population, but in a study where we saw only eight infections out of 21,000 vaccinated people, we can't guarantee that this is actually the case. So how do we actually determine our effectiveness then? Well, as the vaccine is just now beginning to be distributed on a wider scale, the best way is to observe the impact that the vaccine has on infection rates over time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope I've helped you understand what 95% efficacy means for the Pfizer vaccine and what the difference between efficacy and effectiveness for a vaccine actually is. The Pfizer vaccine and other vaccines certainly look promising. However, it's important to remember to still exercise proper social distancing, hygiene, and mask wearing to do your part to protect yourself and those around you until the pandemic is over.